Okay, so in our previous chapter, we had discussed on KMS and how you can use your symmetric cryptography using KMS. In this particular chapter, we'll talk about how we can use KMS along with your asymmetric cryptography. So let's discuss what asymmetric cryptography is. Now, asymmetric cryptography is a huge topic in itself and the link to what asymmetric cryptography I will send in the description below. So I'll send you a few links of Wikipedia and you can just go through that. So now the main gist of asymmetric cryptography is that there are two keys that get generated for you. That is the private key and the public key. Now the public key can be handed out to anybody, whereas the private key is kept separately and in a protected location. So in KMS, whenever you're creating an asymmetric cryptography, you can either generate your own public or private key. Now there are ways in which you can do that. So that's something that we'll discuss when I give you the examples. Or you can use GCP to generate these keys as well. So it's up to you. So once you've created these two keys, you can use these two keys in two distinct scenarios. That is one is for encryption and the other is for digital signature. So now let's talk about encryption. So the first thing you need to remember is that we have Alice here. Now Alice has created a public private key or an asymmetric key. Now this particular private key is with Alice, whereas the public key she shared with Bob. But this particular public key can be shared by anybody. So in this example, Bob has got this public key. Now Bob wants to send a message to Alice. So what he will do is he'll encrypt this particular message called Hello World using the public key that Alice has given him. And once he's encrypted it, Alice can decipher this particular piece of code because she's got the private key. So Alice will use her private key to decrypt that message that she sent. And that is the main gist of your public private key here. So because Alice has got access to the private key, only Alice can decrypt the message. So this particular message that has been sent by Bob using his public key can only be deciphered by anybody who's got access to the private key. And since only Alice has access to that private key, only she can decipher that message. So this is the main gist and the main important aspect of encryption using your asymmetric key. Now in our example, the first thing that we'll do is we'll use KMS to generate a public and a private key. And then later on, we'll use a tool called OpenSSL and the public key that we've got to encrypt a message. And that message again will be decrypted using the KMS because only KMS has got access to the private key. So let's see how we can do this. Okay, so I'm back in my KMS system and I'll be using the same key ring that I had created in my previous chapter. Now the link to that chapter I'll give in the description below as well as over here. So let's open this key ring that we've generated and let's create a key. So let's click on create key and let's create a generated key. So again, for this example, I'll be using a GCP generated key. So in the upcoming chapters, I'll be using an imported key. So it's a little different while using an imported key. So that's something that I'll talk about once I start working on the imported key. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll just give a name for this. So let's just call this as my, and again here for this example, I'll be choosing software. And now here you have the option of choosing. So in our previous chapter, we had chosen symmetric. So in this particular chapter, we'll choose asymmetric decrypt. So let's open this. And by default, it chooses this particular key type. So let's just leave it as this. And let's click on create. So here you also have the option of choosing other algorithms as well. So for this, let's just choose the default that it serves us. So let's click on create. Okay, so our key has been created. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to download the public key. So the private key is within KMS itself. So there's no way that we can access the private key. So the only way we can try access it is using our G Cloud command or using SDK. So the first thing that we'll do, like I said previously, is we'll get access to the public key. So let's open this. And let's get the public key. So let's download this. Okay, so I've downloaded the public key. So the next thing I'll do is I open my shell. Okay, so the okay, so now that I've opened the shell, the first thing that I'll do is I will download, or should I say I'll upload the public key that I have just created. So let's go to our shell and let's upload that file. Choose the file. So okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to use a tool called OpenSSL. Now I already have OpenSSL in my Cloud Shell. So it comes default with Cloud Shell. So if you're using Cloud Shell, then that's the best option you have because it comes default with the OpenSSL. So the next thing that we need to do is we have a public key. We have our OpenSSL. Let's create a text that we want to encrypt. So let's create a text.txt. So let's just call this as encrypt.txt and let's just type hello world. 
So this is the text that I want to encrypt. So again, to encrypt this particular text, there is a command that you need to use. Now this particular documentation I will send in the description below. So all that you need to do is you need to open, copy this particular command and let's try to plug in all these values here. So I'll open my notepad. So here the first thing that I need to do is I need to input the text that I need to encrypt. So the text here is encrypt.txt. So let's copy this. I need to encrypt this, the public bin. So this remains the same. So here I need to provide the path for the public key. So let's copy this. And the name of my file is this. So let me just copy this. Let's paste it here. And here I need to paste my encrypted output file. So I will just call this as, so this is a file that gets generated once I run this particular command. So I'll just call this as output encrypt.txt. So this looks fine. So let's run this particular command. Let me copy this and let's paste it here. And let's see if a file has got created. And you can see that a file has got created here. So let's cat this file and let's see what it looks like. So you can see that there's garbage here. So let's clear the screen. Okay, so now that you've created your encrypted file, you need to decrypt it. Now, like I stated previously, your private key is within your KMS. So you need to use your KMS API or you need to use gcloud via KMS to decrypt that particular file. So if you go down, you can see that you have options. So you can either use gcloud or you can use other SDKs to decrypt that particular file. So let's use this particular gcloud KMS command to decrypt the file. So let's copy this again and let's plug in the values. So here I need to give the version. So the version here is one. This is the version. So this is one. And the key is my decrypt key. So let's copy this and let's paste it here. So the key ring is, let's, so the key ring is this particular key ring, my demo key ring. So let's copy this. And my key ring, let's see what the location is. So the location is US Central one. Let's copy this here. And here I need to give the cipher text file that I just generated. So the file that I have generated is So this is the output file that I had generated. So this is the encrypted file. And here I need to give the decrypted file. So let's just copy this. And let's just call this as decrypted file. So a file called output.decrypt should be hopefully generated once I run this command. So let's copy this. And let's paste it now. Click on authorize. Okay, so let's do an LSLT. And let's cat this particular file. So this is the file that got generated. So let's do a cat. And you can see that we got the hello world back. So this is how you can decrypt your file. So that's it for encryption using your KMS. So I hope this was a useful lecture. In our next lecture, we'll see on how you can use KMS to create your digital signature. So I'll see you in the next chapter.